Welcome to the Nightly Rant. I'm Mike. And I'm Toria. This is the show where we talk about the awful things that have happened in our day, the awesome things that have happened in our day, and all the things in between. Thanks for listening, and we truly hope you enjoy. So, I had a great time at the career fair today. Good. That's that's awesome. I feel like there are people in the world who wouldn't have a great time at the career fair. I like talking to those kids. Yeah? It's interesting because... What's really interesting is it's not much different than speaking to Mitchell and Melissa. Like, you get the same blank stare back at you. <laughs> well, they are like, of a similar like, age. Are you done talking yet? But then you notice, like, you'll say something, and it shifts the energy in the room. And all of a sudden, people start having questions, and then that brings up questions by that person, and then someone in the back has a question. And that's kind of what happened. It was kind of cool. Like the energy shifted and kids started asking questions. I mean, the one kid dominated with a lot of questions, but his questions were really good. And he was very, like she said, he was very aggressive. Well, there was only a couple of kids who would rather sit in the back and talk about whatever they were talking about. Yeah. Most of them were engaged. Yeah. But see, that's the mistake that they make these last couple of years is they used to have teachers involved one for every room where there was a speaker which makes perfect sense and then those teachers would grade the kids on their participation and now they wouldn't necessarily if you didn't have anything to say they wouldn't necessarily mark you off what they were more looking for was you being a jackass right understood so if you had something good to say or you were quiet you got the full points but if you were a jackass you got a zero which makes perfect sense I when think you so think too. about it. I think so, too. I think, I think it makes perfect sense because um, not everybody is going to have questions. Maybe, maybe five kids have already researched being a programmer and they've already started writing code. And so they're just there because they're interested in the topic. Right. And they want to pass time because that's what that's what kids do. Like what an adult would do. An adult would go, oh, I'm at a I'm at a conference and they're having a thing about um editing podcast for beginners. Well, I'm not going to go to that. I already know that stuff. And I don't need to go to it so I can feel good and be like, "Oh, I know my stuff," which is what people do. Right. They go there and kind of observe so then they look like the expert and everybody looks to them like the expert. Kids don't get that option. Kids don't do that. Kids, you know, they're just kind of like all right, here I am. Yeah, I'm at the technology, and since I'm being forced, I might as well go to something I like. Right. And so they're quiet because they really have nothing to ask you. So it's not fair to mark them down because they didn't ask a question. Yeah, I get it. I think it would be dumb, actually, because realistically, that's why we're there, to get them to think about what they want to be. Not to convince them to do what we're doing, Right. Because because you they're not you're not trying to convince them to do what you're doing. You're just trying to educate them on the pros and cons of what you're doing so that they can make a more educated decision. Right. I mean, they probably looked at four to five different career paths today. Yeah. I think four. So that was the total number of sessions. And I think that what we're, well, I don't think what I always go into it with the mindset of is I want to show you what I like and don't like about my job. Right. In a real and pragmatic way so that you can decide what you want to do, because I'm not going to sit here and tell you that my job is the best job in the whole world or it's the easiest job or any of that. I'm not going to tell you that. Because I don't believe that. Right. And like that kid that I overheard leaving said, um, they all, they all just talked about how much they 
how amazing their job is and I call bullshit. Well, you talked about what was bad. Is it your fault that he didn't pay attention to that part? Exactly. No. Well, and that's why kids are generally encouraged that if there's something that doesn't make sense to you or add up to you, ask a question. Because then we could have said, oh, well, like I said a little while ago, X, Y, Z, you know? Yep. Um, But, you know, that's why there's... <laughs> I've got to tell you what I see. Um, That's why there's supposed to be an adult there. Right, right. It's to kind of encourage that. And since they've stopped doing that, I've noticed there's been less questions. Well, because last year there was no adult. It was just the student advisor that was supposed to be ask, encouraging questions. So it was okay last year. But then this year, the student advisor didn't do anything. Well, last year, remember we had the two female student advisors? Yeah. And they were on ball, on the ball. Yeah. Like they asked questions and they asked follow-up questions to questions that the students asked. Right. Which I thought was awesome. Right. Because that's really, you know, like for those of you who don't know, you've never spoken at a career day, you know, they set up, I don't know how many, I think in this school there's four, some schools it's three, there's at least two, okay, career pa career groups that are going to speak. And they give them to you at a certain time. So yes, you're going to have competition and some kids are going to pick one over another. And I really think that's why they give them, the more sessions they give them, the more useful the career day is. I mean, they make it a career half day, and I think it's because professionals have a hard time. Right. But why not recruit twice as many professionals and have those who prefer to speak in the afternoon speak in the afternoon, and those who prefer to speak in the morning speak in the morning, and then you'd have, assuming they've done four for half a day, you'd have eight slots that kids could go to. And they'd really be able to see a glimpse into every career path that they wanted to choose that was of interest to them. They'd be able to get a peek behind the curtain. I think that's a solidly good idea. See, and right now they limit them to like three or four there's bound to be one that they might be interested in that they're setting aside. And like I said, my goal isn't to be like, oh, come be a computer programmer. Sure, if you're interested in it and you're asking about internship, hell yeah, I'm going to encourage you to come and intern with me. I mean, that's kind of the unspoken rule in these things is that as the business, if a kid's interested in working for you and you're okay with hiring him, we've got no problem with that. Right. You know, something that happened at the career thing that I had to laugh at was the woman that you were speaking with saying that she doesn't hire people with no experience. She said, I'm okay to work with an intern, but I don't like to hire people who don't have experience. Well, that's the most annoying thing. The no most annoying thing is why don't you hire people that don't really have any experience and train them so that there are very shortly actually going to be people with experience instead of no people at all with any experience well, anywhere. Well, and here's how I think she intended it, but ultimately you're going to see that I think it still leads to where you're at. I think what she meant was by being an intern, you're getting experience. And that she encourages you to be an intern by going ahead and accepting interns at her business, which many businesses will not. Because since it's her belief that you need to have experience for her to hire you, she feels that it's only ethical for her to provide somebody with that experience. So, okay. She's basically saying, I'm going to give you a way to get experience because I'm one of those people that thinks you must have experience for me to hire you, right? Right. But okay, now take that part out a little, back it out a bit. Okay. Why doesn't she just hire a new person as an actual employee 
not this whole, well, I'm going to give you a six month internship and then we'll see how it goes, you know, and I'm going to pay you this much money because it's California. You have to pay. Right. I'm going to pay you this much money. Why not just be like, look, I'm going to hire you as mm-hmm. a full time employee. But while you're training, this is how much you're going to get paid. Then as soon as you complete training, now you're an entry level programmer. This is how much money you're going to get paid. Right. Because there are so many negative things affiliated with being an intern. Like nobody gives you any respect when they hear that you're an intern. You're not you don't have a job, really. I mean, you're you're working and getting paid your little teeny tiny intern salary. But it ends in six months and there's no guarantee of anything. Right. But my way, I'm still working with a green person who knows nothing and I'm still training them exactly as I would an intern. Right. But then when they're done interning, well, yeah, I've basically promised them that I'll pay them an entry level salary. But if they suck, I can let them go. I guess I agree with you. But I guess that my issue with what she said was the fact that she said it to a room full of teenagers with no experience. No, I understand that. Right. I understand that. But basically, I don't think she saw it as a bad thing because she was offering this internship in order to gain experience. What I'm saying to you is that's just a way for the company to save money. Huh? Come on. How much you going to pay an intern? I don't know. Maybe maybe 12 bucks an hour. Okay. Then how much are you going to pay a junior programmer? 25 bucks an hour. So you call it an intern for six months and you pay $12 an hour. Or you can be like me and be fair and ethical with it and call it a trainee, a trainee programmer Mm -hmm. and pay them. 15 to to 18 bucks an hour, depending on how much knowledge they arrive with. Right. Because then that person is a programmer at your company. You treat them like they're a programmer right. and you're, you make them have the responsibilities of a programmer. And you know exactly what you'll give them sometimes. Look, I want you to get familiar with the code. So here we have these three modules and the guy formatted them three spaces line. Then he indented four spaces on the second and third and fourth line. We want you to go through and we want you to indent everything for a lot, four spaces, which means he's going to have to touch every line of code in that module because taking the one that was done with three and making it four. Yeah. Now only leaves a gap of two between the four ones. You have to move it out to, oh, now you got to move the other one out to, you got to move the other one out to, or it won't align. Right. So you make him touch every line of code and tell him read it while you're while you're going through it and give me some notes on what you see it's doing. Well, and also hiring somebody as a trainee, you don't have to put an end date on their training. No, exactly. You could make a decision after six months. They haven't learned enough. They're doing great, but but they aren't done yet. Right. So you know what? We're gonna we're gonna reevaluate you in sixty days. Right. And you just leave them as a trainee at the lower pay until they're ready to not be a trainee anymore. Right. But you're being more fair than calling them an intern because, number one, an internship is is a set period of time. Not to say they couldn't offer a second internship, but still it's a set period of time at a set pay rate. And it's generally a low pay rate. Right. I'm offering a somewhat livable wage at the 15 to 18 dollars an hour to train somebody. Right. Because I think that there's a huge benefit. Now think about this. Now they become a junior programmer with your company. Mm-hmm. Then they do so well in a few years, they become a senior programmer with your company. Who pretty much taught them everything they know? Exactly. And on the very least, you taught them your approach to things. You have indoctrinated them with your approach. And you're not hiring somebody that comes with habits you don't appreciate from another company. Exactly. exactly. Which is what you get when you hire an intern for six months and then a more experienced programmer to pick up the slack. Yes. That is absolutely true. But I feel like if you hired one person who's extremely good at their job, like 10,000 years of experience like you have, and you could give them like two or three trainees, 
that you would get a crap load of work done, that you would yes. get more work done with those four people at the same rate as you'd get if you hired two experts such as yourself. Yeah. That's why in like the last year, the absolute most interesting position that I interviewed for was that one in Culver City that... The Code Academy one, they right? Were in a, they were a school teaching yeah. people how to code and you were the basically the instructor slash lead developer. Right. And that one was extremely interesting to me. Um, and the only reason they didn't hire me was because I didn't know the exact name of something that they were trying to do. Right. Yet they couldn't even get their own code to work, which was interesting. So I don't think they can sit in judgment. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I'll get it. Anyway, I just wanted to point out that I thought that lady was kind of, hmm, well, off base. Yeah, and I saw her perspective, but I see yours. That's what I'm saying. I think it ultimately does come back to your perspective. There's other better ways to have handled the situation going forward. And I think hiring a trainee as an employee with the idea that you're going to move them along the ladder is a much better approach. And I think it's better for the company and better for the employee. Yeah. That's why I really like these career day things is you get to reach out and touch people by showing them what it is you do. And maybe they feel your passion for it and maybe they don't. Well, who knows? In, in a few months or next year by this time, we might be in a position where we'd be looking to hire an intern. And you could offer the high school students a summer internship yeah. of some variety. And you could teach them and all that good stuff. And it'd be really cool. Well, yeah, and especially since uh, especially since you you get the opportunity then to possibly grow with that person in your company. Right. I think it could be beneficial for both. And they don't have to be, you know, physically in an office. Right. That would be the cool thing about doing an internship with us is it's a remote internship. Yeah. And I mean, like, and it's close enough that we could arrange meetings like in El Segundo or something like that every like once a month. Like when we have our vital factor meeting, mm -hmm. we could do it in person somewhere in the middle. Yeah. And meet with that person. You know? Yeah. So I think it would be cool. And you could just have like daily screen share time with them or something. Yeah, exactly. And teach them. It'd be a time commitment, but it'd be a cool thing to do. I think so too. Something to have as a long term goal. Yep. So anyway. Anyway. Got anything to add? We could talk about the the nasty fire that there was in Cypress today. Oh. But that's Go pretty ahead. much all I have to add. Go ahead. Start it off. So we're driving home from Santa Monica, and I have that Pulse Point app on my phone, which is, you know, it comes in quite handy when there's some shenanigans going on. And I get a notification that there's a fire at a nearby Jack in the Box. Okay. Right. I remember, I remember you saying, look, the pin is dropped right on the Jack in the Box. Right. And it, and it even gave the address of the Jack in the Box. So... That was interesting. But now that I think of it, whoever called in the fire must have not known where it was and just seen the smoke. Because if you look, the smoke was like engulfing the jack in the box. And so the they said the it box. was near because right. the jack in the box address is real obvious. Right. Um, and then so we're getting closer and closer to this area because we have to drive past it to get home. And we, I get a second notification saying it's a confirmed two alarm fire. I don't know what two alarm means because I'm not, you know, by any means a fire person. So the moral of the story was there's no longer a mobile home where there used to be a mobile home. An elderly wheelchair bound person is like with ha is in the hospital oh with God. like critical burns. And I just had a horrible thought, you know, what if she doesn't have any family here? Yikes, that is would be awful. Wind up homeless. I mean, she just lost everything she owned. 
in a fire. Yep. Well. And then people, you know, of course, you know, they, they, these homeless people want to be homeless. Of course, none of them have had this experience. Right. Of course, that could never happen. It sounds like they're still trying to find the other occupant. There was another occupant of the trailer. Yeah, I read they're that. They're still trying to find that person. The lady who was burned said there was nobody was home. Anybody. But neighbors are insisting that there was somebody. that there was somebody there, and somebody else lives there. Hmm. So there's still investigation ongoing. That would I just, be awful. Can you imagine if someone died in there? Right. I just read the news brief from the Cypress Fire Fire um, Authority. Authority and or Orange County Fire Authority. There's nothing. Huh. Nothing about the second person at all. So. Pretty wild when there's a huge fire in the county. It gets reported by the um, OC Fire Authority, and we drive right past it. Right. That's twice in the last like three months. But you know what other clue there was that this was a big deal? What? The presence of the Los Alamitos Police Department to help out the Cypress Police Department. Right. They were basically doing the cleanup work for Cypress so that Cypress could get inside and do the real work that well, needed to be done. And I was reading, I was reading um, on some Facebook posts that police had gone door to door in the mobile home park. They'd evacuated the people near to the one that was right. on fire, but they were telling everybody else they needed to stay in their homes. They didn't want anybody out right. in danger. There was there was the one lady who posted that a possum was running by her and it was on fire. Awful. And they put the fire out on the possum and then they called animal control to come save the possum. So the possum has a, is, is going to have a better day tomorrow, I hope. It was, just, it was all around terrible. It sounds like it, though. Like, I couldn't imagine, first of all, I can't imagine just losing everything I own in one fell swoop like that. I just can't. Right. Um, but secondly, I can't imagine how it must feel to get caught up in something burning. Right. That would be, that would be, that would be horrifying. Yeah. I just, I I'm glad. I wouldn't she, be able to do it. I'm glad that she managed to get out, though. Yeah. The lady in the wheelchair. Because I can only imagine how much it must suck to be less mobile and then stuck in a like life or death situation. And then she clearly, they, they told us they got, that she got like severely burned. So clearly it was a really life or death situation. Yeah. I'm just glad she got out of there. Well, from the sounds of it, the propane tank tank blew up. But it was after the fire was started. It after the fire yeah. started, so it didn't start the fire. Mm-mm. But it, it would have accelerated the fire. Yeah, which is probably what got her burned. Mm-hmm. That's awful. Well, we'll follow up on her tomorrow. Yep. See how she's doing, and we'll let people know. I'm just going to throw in there once again the 100th episode contest. Uh, winner gets, um, what was the top prize? Mm, it's a gift card and a, a gift card to Amazon.com nightly rant with a t-shirt. nice, with a nice number attached to it and a nightly rant t-shirt. Second prize is another gift card and a t-shirt. And you know, you love us. So you're going to send your, you're going to send us one of your favorite nightly rant moments to Info at yogispodcastnetwork.com, Y-O-G-I-S-P-O-D-C-A-S-T-N-E-T-W-O-R-K.com. And, you know, perhaps here's another enticement. I like to make nightly rant moments for the Zoom Media Network, and anybody who I use their moment their favorite moment as a nightly rant moment gets a five dollar Starbucks gift card. Ooh, that's pretty cool. Okay, so that's for anybody who enters, and I use their idea in a nightly rant moment. Sounds good. All right. Spur of the moment. Yep. Hmm. Uh, you know, my brain is always going a million miles an hour, so there's that. So. Ready to uh, 
Finish up then? Yep. Time to call it a day. All righty. Good night, everyone. Hasta la bye-bye. Hi, everyone. This is Mike, and I truly hope you enjoyed the show. You're able to subscribe to this show on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher so as to never miss an episode. If, by chance, you did miss an episode here or there, you can catch up on all shows, past and present, by heading over to yogispodcastnetwork.com forward slash TNR show. Thanks for listening.